Topic three, capitalization of borrowing costs. Borrowing costs. These are items that are typically expensed. However, if they are directly related to the acquisition or creation of a qualifying asset, they may be capitalized. This is consistent with the idea that all the costs incurred to bring an asset into use should be capitalized. That is, all the costs associated with the economic reality with this asset should be capitalized. Can you think back to an item from a previous chapter? Ah, if you're thinking about decommissioning obligations being capitalized to the related asset, then you are correct. Now remember that we still have our impairment tests, which mean that the total capitalized value of this asset cannot exceed its fair value. Effectively, expensing of the borrowing costs happen over the life of the asset through depreciation instead of upfront. Now, in order to capitalize these borrowing costs, it must be on qualifying assets. These assets, in order to qualify, are non-financial assets only and may include inventories, PP&E, and intangible assets. They are items which must take a substantial amount of time to prepare for use or for sale. Without a significant amount of time, we cannot capitalize these borrowing costs. For example, borrowing costs associated with the production of inventory manufactured quickly cannot be capitalized but those associated with inventory manufactured over a significant amount of time can be. There is no objective time period to determine whether or not to capitalize. This depends on the company and its typical business activities. Again, the whole point, to reflect the economic reality. If it's qualifying, then these borrowing costs are capitalized and the interest is calculated using the effective interest rate method that we saw in a previous topic. This includes other borrowing capital items, including fees and foreign exchange adjustments. If the money, borrow, money is borrowed specifically to finance a qualifying asset, then determining the relevant borrowing costs is relatively easy. If general borrowings are used, so that is funds used uh, for the company to fund a bunch of different items, then you must have you must do a separate calculation to calculate the average borrowing costs and use this rate specific to that asset. The capitalization starts when all of the following three conditions are met. The money is borrowed, a payment on the asset is made, the activities to bring the asset into use have begun. Capitalization ends when substantially all of the activities to bring the asset into use are complete. If no progress is being made on bringing the asset into use during a period of time, no capitalization should be incurred for that period. Let's take a look at a question. Company C builds a new manufacturing facility themselves. To finance this construction, they used their general borrowings. Company L's capital structure is below. What rate should be used for the capitalization of borrowing costs for the construction project? They used a term loan in the amount of 500,000, which cost 300,000, an operating line of credit for 2 million at a cost of 160,000 and equity in the form of 3 million. If you said 6.6%, which represents a mix, uh, pardon me, which represents the average of the term loan and the operating line of credit, again, not the equity, if you used an average of the costs associated to borrow from the term loan and the operating line of credit relative to the funds borrowed to give you an average of 6.6%, then that would be correct. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.